Sustainability is about ensuring the future for generations to come. This means doing what we can to fight climate change and to do it collectively. Hey there, my name is Charlotte May and I'm here at the National University of Singapore's School of Design and Environment 4. Now it is Singapore's first new build net zero energy building and the first building in Southeast Asia to achieve the internationally recognized zero energy certification. So let's go find out more about greener buildings. Hi Professor Eric. Hi Charlotte. I love this space, it's so bright and airy. It is, isn't it? You can think of this six-story building as a series of platform and boxes. There's lots of space, natural ventilation, and as you can see, sunlight enters all of the rooms. Practically speaking, that means we're saving on electricity, especially in relationship to air conditioning and to lighting. Yeah. Wow. You can also see that we've tried to combine the outside space with the inside space to create a kind of open, natural environment with fantastic views to the tree canopy and to the vegetation beyond. I know, I love it, and it's absolutely stunning, especially right now on a sunny day, but what happens when it rains? It's true, rain is really part of our story. We harvest it for irrigation and for flushing, and we also channel stormwater or rainwater when there's a big storm into a bioretention basin that helps beautify the landscape, and it also really prevents flooding. Sustainable design is about aligning to the natural environment and also reducing the building's energy consumption. It's also part of the bigger plan to reset the way in which people live, work, and play. Well, I know just the person to speak to about this plan. Charlotte, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So, Dr. Corey, you know this idea of a net zero energy building, is this a sign of things to come? Oh yes, we are looking forward to many of such buildings in the future. If not net zero, at least super low energy. You know, unlike in schools, where we are always aiming for full marks, 100 marks, but for energy use, we are very happy and we like the number zero. So, under the Singapore Green Plan 2030, we want to create greener infrastructure and buildings and we plan to green 80% of Singapore's buildings by 2030 and make 80% of new buildings super low energy from 2030. Speaking of energy efficiency, we have an mm. amazing example right here which is hybrid cooling uh, which delivers uh, comfort through slightly warmer temperatures and a little bit higher humidity levels but produces mm. comfort through the fan and better fresh air. Um, and this delivers um, great comfort for our students and for our staff mm. while making the building very energy efficient. Well, that's really wonderful, you know, that's a, really an innovative solution to reduce energy usage while ensuring the comfort and the well-being of the occupants. Yeah, I totally agree and I feel that right now. It's not freezing cold like we are in some other buildings. And you know, Professor Eric, I see so many large windows here and this is not something we see in many buildings in Singapore. So please do share more about it. Sure, mm. I mean, it's amazing that we have this great window wall that has an amazing view to the harbour and also to the greenery um, beyond. But also these windows can be opened here for our students if they need a little bit of break. It also allows the fresh air to come onto the inside of the building and produce a higher air quality for everyone who is an inhabitant here. And Professor, I hear that you have solar panels as well here. It's true. On the roof, we have a great large photovoltaic array that delivers 500 megawatt hours of renewable energy per year and helps power the building and make it net zero. Solar energy is Singapore's most viable form of uh, clean energy and really across Singapore we are planning to increase the solar energy deployment by five times by 2030. So what we want is we want the rooftops of schools or residential, commercial and other buildings to be installed with solar panels so that we can have an island-wide rooftop solar farm. Wow, I love that idea of the rooftop solar farms. And you know, I'm sure many Singaporeans are very excited to hear what the government has planned for the next 10 years with regard to the Green Plan. We are exploring low carbon technology and energy imports from renewable sources in the region. So I really hope that you know, the many wonderful sustainability features in this building will really inspire the students here to think about how they themselves too can contribute to the fight against climate change. I totally agree with you. Let's meet one of our students, Charmaine, and hear what she has to offer. Hi Charmaine, it's great to see you. 
Let me introduce to you Dr. Kaur, Senior Minister of State, and Charlotte, a sustainability advocate. Charmaine, could you share with us, studying in NUS and in this school within this building, how has it changed your perspective about climate change and about sustainability? Well, studying in NUS has actually broadened my perspective on the topic of sustainability, in particular the importance of reducing carbon emissions, especially in the building industry. This has even influenced me to choose energy as my thesis topic. I believe that we should all take action, and for example, I'm actually trying to use less air conditioning now as one of the greener practice that I'm currently adopting. Mm. That's awesome, Charmaine, and I'm so excited for your thesis topic. And you know, this building is proof that sustainable design is the way forward. So thank you, Professor Eric, for taking us around, and Dr. Kaur for speaking more about the Green Plan. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Charlotte. This beautiful building shows us that sustainability is achievable and that it can help us towards a better way of living. So if you want to find out more about the Green Plan and what you can do to help fight climate change, check out greenplan.gov.sg.